uh, you covered a bunch of topics. I have two uh, areas if you can touch on. One is social media um, and its role on silencing the conservatives and recent um, happenings that happened. Uh, Trump's campaign manager was blocked by Facebook and Twitter is constantly blocking uh, conservative uh, notes. So I'm concerned about how social media companies becoming the law of uh, what content we are seeing and what we are um, supposed to see. So it's kind of uh, controlling uh, the narratives also. It's quite concerning for me. Well, you stop it only by A, creating alternative platforms. Um, our secret weapon in all this is actually Trump himself. If Trump moves off of Twitter, Twitter would collapse. Twitter is based on Trump. So Twitter thinks that they control, but Trump controls Twitter. Um, but when you have that kind of power, you have to use it carefully. And you have to use it effectively. Um, the thing that's going on that you're touching on, which is really bad, is that the left has taken issues that are controversial, in which they are defending positions that are hard to defend, but they don't want to fight about it. They don't want criticism, and so they've decided to brand that criticism hate speech. Let's take an example. When I was in college, I was taught the doctrine of multiculturalism. And the doctrine of multiculturalism is basically that all cultures are equal, and no culture is better or worse than any other. And when you're talking about things like, you know, whether the Norwegian males like to carry a handbag and whether the French like to eat croissants, you can have that kind of parlor room debate. But then when somebody says, I like to do an honor killing on my daughter, suddenly you go, whoa, should a liberal society make room for that, right? And so this kind of issue, anchored as it is in tribalism, anchored as it is sometimes in religious fanaticism. But the truth of it is, there it is, and it's in our politics, and it's not just going on in, in, in Syria, it's going on in the United States. It's going on in Dearborn, Michigan, it's going on here. If you raise it, they want to throw you off Twitter, they want to throw you off Facebook, they want to kick you off your job. So this is bullshit. Um, and so it has to stop. Um, and, um, and all mechanisms need to be unleashed to stop it. Um, so this is why um, the passivity of our side of these fights is not good. I mean, my argument with the conservative intelligentsia is that they want to live in the Reagan era, but in fact, we don't. The other side has become much more radicalized and gangsterized. I mean, think of it this way. In, in, the, in the Reagan era, it is unimaginable that Reagan would go to Michael Moore and try to lock him up for two years for making a campaign finance mistake. Unthinkable. But it's equally unthinkable that Jimmy Carter would do that to me. But it is very thinkable that when, the, when I'm sitting across from the Obama guys, I am fully convinced that if they could lock, lock me up for 20 years, they would have been delighted to do it because they wanted to take me out. So it, you know, it opened my eyes that we're living in a different America, and then when I see my fellow conservatives, and they're like, you know, Antifa's marauding the campuses, I'm writing a stinging op-ed calling for civility. <laughs> so the time calls for people who are not like that. And the time calls for people who, when they say, you can't speak on the campus, it should make you extremely determined come what may to speak and if you can't speak at graduation you're going to be speaking on the lawn and having yes. a press conference after yes. Yes.